The Chemistry of Candles Before the discovery of electricity, houses were mostly illuminated with candles. They can be explained very quickly. Due to the heat of the flame, the wax melts and is sucked into the wick due to capillary forces. Further up, the heat is able to evaporate the wax, the vapor is the fuel of the flame and keeps the reaction going. Wax itself is hard to ignite, nevertheless when it is heated until it evaporates, the vapor can be ignited as in the wick of the candle. The temperature at which a compound can be ignited in air is called flash point. The flash point of wax is roughly between 200 and 250 degrees C. The precise temperature depends on the composition of the wax because candles are often made of stearin, paraffin or even a mixture of both. Oil lamps work the same way as a candle, but the fuel is already in a liquid state. Here a glass bottle was filled with sunflower seed oil and a twisted piece of paper towel was used as a wick which was held by aluminium foil. When the flame is too large or an unsuitable oil is used, a lot of soot is formed. This also happens when the wick is too long. That's why wicks of candles had to be cut with a wick trimmer back then. Today the wicks are braided, so they bend to the side when they are burned. This way it gets enough oxygen at the edge of the flame, making it burn and become shorter by itself. To show one of the products from the combustion of a candle, a round bottom flask is held above the flame. On the inner surface water condenses, which is a product of nearly every usual combustion. In another experiment, another flask was held above the flame. It would have been sufficient to hold the flask above the flame for a few seconds, but this way the water could be shown again. Of course, both of these experiments can be made with the same flask. The second product of the combustion can be detected by adding a calcium hydroxide solution. When the flask is shaken, the solution becomes cloudy. The second compound is carbon dioxide, which reacts with the calcium hydroxide to form insoluble calcium carbonate and water. This leads to a cloudy solution. The exact chemical equation of the burning candle is depending on the composition of the wax again. Paraffin is made of hydrocarbons, which mostly have a length of about 20 carbon atoms. In short, the candle wax reacts with oxygen from the air to form CO2 and water. An equation that represents the combustion of all hydrocarbons and paraffin looks like this. X is the number of carbon atoms and Y the number of hydrogen atoms. The flame of the candle can be divided in five zones. Close to the wick is the non-luminous zone in which the wax evaporates. Further on the outside is the blue zone. Due to convection, air is pulled to the candle from the bottom, causing this part to have a high amount of oxygen. This leads to the wax being oxidized completely, making the flame become blue. An example for this effect is a burner with an open air intake. Above the wick is the dark zone. This part gets only low amounts of oxygen from the air, so combustion is very low making this part look dark. Still, the molecules begin to split and form shorter and longer chains as well as soot particles made of carbon. In the luminous zone, a majority of the wax is burned, which causes a lot of heat to be released. The heat causes the soot particles to glow, but not to burn because there is still a lack of oxygen. The lack of oxygen comes from the outermost zone, which is spread around the flame. Here the wax and soot particles are burned completely, which is why this is also the hottest part of the candle. To show that soot particles are formed in an incomplete combustion of the wax, a wire gauze can be held into the top of the flame. When it is held lower, the smoke becomes white as it is now wax vapors instead of soot particles. When the wire gauze is held at the right spot, the vapors can even be lit again. When a glass tube is held into the flame, the white wax vapors rise in it. 
and it can be lit again so that two flames are present now. Out of curiosity the flame was blown out and it was tried to collect the vapors in a test tube. When the vapors cool down on the surface of the test tube they slowly drop down into it. It was waited until the test tube was filled completely with the cool vapors and then it was tested if they can still be lit. Even the cooled down vapors of wax are highly flammable. A simple but impressive experiment is done by blowing out the candle and immediately holding a burning match into the rising vapors. The flame is able to pass quite a long path until the candle is lit again. This was the chemistry of candles. I hope you enjoyed, please rate and comment. If you want to see another experiment with candle wax, you can watch my video here, or you can watch my latest video here. A big thanks to my supporters on Patreon.